The topic of this lesson is exponent rules and scientific notation. Here we have all of the exponent rules that we'll be covering in this course, and we'll practice some examples of each one. With the product rule, we can see that the base of a is raised to a power and multiplied by another base of a raised to a power. So the rule is to add those exponents when those bases are like bases. For the zero exponent rule, when you have a base raised to the power of zero, that will equal one. Sometimes we will get answers other than one, and that's only because other operations might be happening to a. So we'll explore that. With the quotient rule, you can see the problem is written as a fraction. So quotient, remember, is division. So a base raised to a power divided by a like base raised to a power shows the exponents are being subtracted. In actuality, what's happening is when the base moves across the division bar, the sign of the exponent will change. We started with a to the positive n, and when that base and exponent shifts to the numerator, you can see the sign of n changes now to minus. The negative exponent rule allows us to rewrite a base with a negative exponent so that the exponent will be a positive number. And most of the time, that's how we want to write our exponents, with positive numbers only. Our exception is when we're using scientific notation. So if we start with a raised to a negative exponent, think of that as a to the negative m over 1, and we're writing it as a reciprocal. So a to the minus m shifts to the denominator. Notice the sign of m changes. With the power rule, we have a base raised to a power, which is then raised to another power. So a to the m raised to another power means we are multiplying the exponents. With power of a product, that simply means we have more than one base that's raised to the power. So make sure that each base that's in the quantity is raised to the power. And finally, power of a quotient simply means we're starting with a fraction raised to a power. So both the base in the numerator and the base in the denominator will be raised to that power. So let's try some example problems to practice using our exponent rules. Our first exponent rule is the product rule. So again, here is the rule. Base of a to the m times base of a to the n means we're adding exponents. So as long as we have like bases, like we do here, a and a are like bases, we will add the exponents. So in our first example, x to the 7 times x cubed, we have like bases of x. So we just copy that base, and the rule is to add the exponents, so 7 plus 3. So this will give us x to the power of 10. Next, we have y times y squared times y to the 4th. So all the bases are y. So we keep the base of y. The rule is to add the exponents. So on this one, we need to be careful because with our first base of y, it doesn't look like any exponent is given. So when nothing is written, it really is positive 1. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 4. So that makes y to the power of 7. In our next example, notice this time the base is not a variable. It's a number. As long as those numbers are the same, we're still following the product rule. So the product rule says to keep the common base. In our situation, it's 2. And then you add the exponents, 2 plus 3. So 2 plus 3. So that means 2 is raised to the power of 5. Since 2 is an actual number, we can further evaluate this problem. So it means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So you can either do this on your calculator or work it out by hand. 2 times 2 is 4. Another 2 times 2 is 4. And then times another 2. 
4 times 4 is 16 times 2. 16 times 2 makes 32. So the final answer is 32. Here we have the zero exponent rule. When your base is raised to the power of zero, that will equal 1. So in our first example, x to the 7 times x to the 0. We do have a common base of x, so we could use the product rule and say x to the 7 plus 0, that equals x to the 7th. Or we could see it as x to the 7th multiplied by x to the 0 we know is worth 1. So x to the 7th times 1 is still x to the 7th. So we actually have two options to work out this first problem. In the next problem, you can see we have y times y to the 0 times y to the 8th. Remember, y is really y to the 1st. y to the 0 is worth 1. And then we have y to the 8th. So if we multiply these together, it's y to the first times y to the eighth. Now we're using our product rule again. y to the one plus eight gives us y to the power of nine. In our next example, this time the base is a number instead of a variable. So the rule still applies. If the base is raised to the power of zero, then it is worth one. Now the next part is a little trickier because we see 2x to the 0. So you have to think what is actually being raised to the power of 0. And that would be only the base of x, not 2. If 2 were to be included, it would need to have parentheses to show it's included. So we really have 2 times 1. So this answer is 2. And we have something similar here in the last example. We have negative 2 to the 0. So only the base of 2 is raised to the 0, not the negative. There's no parenthesis to include that negative. So we actually have a negative multiplied by 1, which is negative 1. So what I was talking about earlier, sometimes we have answers other than 1 when a base is raised to zero. And that's only because there are other operations happening to the base. In this last example, a negative was being multiplied by the base. In this example, two was being multiplied by base of x. So we have answers other than one. Here we have the quotient rule. With the quotient rule, we're starting with a fraction. We have like bases. So what was really happening here is a to the m is multiplied by 1 over a to the n. And then a to the m was multiplied by a to the minus n. Because the term in the denominator shifted across the division bar. And when that happens, the exponent changes its sign. So it started out originally in the denominator positive and shifted to the numerator now as a negative. So notice we have product rule. Both bases are a. So we have a to the m plus negative n. Well, m plus a negative is the same thing as m minus n. So that's where the rule originates from. Looking at our examples with the quotient rule, x to the 7 divided by x to the 4th really means we can take the term in the denominator, shift it into the numerator. So we have already x to the 7 in the numerator, and it's being multiplied by x to the 4th shifting. So when that happens, the 4 becomes its opposite sign. So both bases are x and we're adding 7 plus negative 4. So that makes x cubed. In the next example, our bases are numbers, but the rule still applies. We're keeping 3 to the 7th, and we'll multiply it by shifting 3 to the 4th into the numerator. So the base of 3 remains, but positive 4 
when it's shifted, becomes negative 4. Notice both bases are 3, so we keep 3, and the rule says to add the exponents. So we have 3 to the power of 3, and since 3 is a numerical base, we can break that apart as 3 times 3 times 3. So that makes 9 times 3, or 27 for the final answer. Now the next two examples are just a little more involved because we have different bases here for the numerical portion. So think of this as 20 fourths. If you can reduce the fraction, then go ahead and reduce the fraction. So I know that 20 is divisible by 4, and so is 4. So if I reduce, I'll have 5 over 1. So I know that 5 will be in the numerator, 1 will be in the denominator. Now I'll work with the variable bases. Well, x is our only variable. According to our quotient rule, I can take the term that's in the denominator and shift it up, and the exponent of positive 5 will be negative 5. So I had x to the 6th, but now I also have x to the minus 5th. So when I simplify this, do you notice how we have division of 1 in the denominator? Well, if you divide by 1, you're not going to change the value of your terms. So to simplify this, we are not leaving division of 1. Everything collected in the numerator, 5x to the power of 1, which we just write as 5x. In the last example, again, we've got some numerical coefficients, 12 and 14. And they're even numbers, so they're at least divisible by 2. And that's probably all, because 12 would be 2 times 6, and 14 would be 2 times 7. So we could reduce the 2, and this time our fraction, we're going to have 6 in the numerator and 7 in the denominator. Now let's look at the variables. I have some bases of y and some bases of z. So I'll just start with y. When I shift y to the 8th to the numerator, I already had y to the 10th up there. And now I'm going to have y to the minus 8th. With the bases of z, shifting z to the 7th into the numerator, well, I already have a z to the 7th. And when this other base shifts, the positive 7 becomes negative 7, so times z to the negative 7. Now you can see 7 plus a negative 7, that's going to make z to the 0. And z to the 0 is 1. So what actually happens is the base of z is completely eliminated from this problem. We still have 6 sevenths, and we still have some base of y. So 10 added to negative 8 would make 2. So we have 6y squared divided by 7.